Hello there and welcome to the first of a series of videos looking to cover the first year of A-Level Maths. These videos are designed to take you through the content section by section so that you're prepared with the maths to answer the questions in each of the exercises. These videos are aimed at supplementing teaching in a classroom environment. However, watching these videos will only get you part of the way to learning the course. It is really important that after you've watched each of the videos, you pause the video in the appropriate places and you have a go at some of the questions. Okay, let's get started with the first of the um, bits of content, and that is the indice laws. So, a reminder from GCSE, we have several of these indice laws. We have a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So when our base numbers are the same and we're timesing uh, some uh, uh, algebraic expressions here, we add the um, powers on the, um, on the letter. Uh, similar for when we divide, we subtract the powers. And for when we do a power of another power, then we multiply the powers together. I'm not going to go into how these rules work or where they come from. Hopefully these are just a recap from your GCSE knowledge. Okay, let's have a go at a few questions then. Uh, also, when you expand brackets, uh, where you've got a and a b to the power of n, you can just um, power each of those terms individually. So the first example here, so we've got x squared times x to the power of 5. That's the first rule here, so we're going to add those powers together, and we get x to the power of 7. On the next one here, we have numbers that are in front of our algebraic expressions. Now, don't get these rules confused with what we do with numbers. We do exactly the same as what we would normally do with numbers. We times them. 2 times 3 will give us 6, and then add the powers. We get 6r to the power of 5. Okay, on to division now. So b to the power of 7 divided by b to the power of 4. In this case here, you subtract the powers from each other. Um, in, in question D here, we're doing 6 divided by 3 first. So when I suggest you do these questions, have a go at the numbers first, uh, and then have a go at the powers afterwards. So in this case, we're dividing our numbers, but we are subtracting our indices. So in this case here, we're going to get 2 from 6 divided by 3, and 5 minus 3 is 2 as well. Okay, a power of another power times by some other algebraic expression. What I suggest we do is we ignore this 2a squared to start with and just fill in what we need for this bit here. A power of a power means we multiply the powers. So a to the power of 6 times 2a squared. And then it's just going to be 2a to the 8 because we're adding the indices there. Notice how in each of these questions they're always the same base number and that is a important part of this topic. If it was a x squared times a y to the power of 5, there's nothing we could do with that other than simplify it to x squared y5. Okay, and we'll sort out the first term here first. So that's 3 to the power of 3. So don't get the numbers confused. Remember, it's still the same operations as it always is. 3 to the power of 3 is 27. And then you times your uh, indices, so you get a 6. And then divided by x to the 4, so you subtract the indices here, and you get 27x squared. Okay, moving on to some uh, expanding the brackets now. Hopefully this is also familiar from GCSE. Remember the technique here is that everything from the first part of the bracket, the first uh, outside the bracket, multiplies by everything inside the bracket, and counting for double negatives as well. So the first part here, we're going to get minus 21 from the numbers, and then x times x is x squared. Think of this as x to the 1 times x to the 1. You can add those 1s together. And then minus 3x times minus 4, that's plus 12x. The next example here is y squared bracket 3 minus 2y cubed. And in this case here, we expand the brackets. So we get 3y squared from the first term and from the second term y squared times y to the power of 3 you add the indices here and you get y to the power of 5. Okay this is exactly the same thing works when you've got three components in your brackets the first part is always going to expand um, 
everything inside the bracket here. So in this first case here, it's going to be 12x squared. In the second case here, it's going to be minus 8 from 2 times 4 and x cubed from 1 add 2. And 20x to the power of 4 um, from adding that 1 and the 3. Okay, and these ones here. Now, this is a typical uh, question where my students would uh, would fall and stumble over, even though they know what they're doing. First of all, we need to expand all of our brackets, but this take away sign here means that we're going to take away everything inside this bracket here. So that's why we need the minus on the 10x here, and when it's minus 5 times 3, we get minus 15. So think of this 5 here is actually minus 5 times whatever you've got inside your bracket. And then simplify what you've got at the end, 10x squared minus 4x minus 15. So when you're doing expanding brackets and simplifying, if you have a take away, say, three brackets, make sure you take away everything inside those brackets. OK, moving on to some of these questions where we now have to split up a fraction. And this is going to occur a lot, particularly when we get to the difficult parts of the course and we're differentiating or integrating. It's really important that you're familiar with splitting up a fraction like this into individual fractions. And the way we can do this is because of the rule where you add fractions with the same denominator, you add the tops, we're going to split it up using that exact same rule here. You can see here, if you were going from right back to left, you'd get the same answer. So we split them up into two individual components. And now we'll simplify each of these components. So the x3, x cubed, goes on bottom of both of these terms. So in this case here, 7 minus 3 is 4 from the fraction rule, and what 4 take away 3 is 1. OK, exactly the same thing is going to need be needed here as well. Now, let's just suppose for a, a second here that these two um, expressions were swapped over here on the top and bottom. We wouldn't be able to split them up then. It's only because they are the numerator are we able to split them up in this way. So you've guessed it, we're going to split them up into a 3x squared over 2x and a 6x5 over 2x as well. The 2x goes on bottom of both of them. And we need a minus in there because we're subtracting that from that. Now remember here in these questions, it's still going to be the case of 3 divided by 2 and 6 divided by 2. We may leave this 3 over 2 because that won't be able to simplify. Our final answer here is going to be 3x over 2 because one of the x's can cancel from the top and the bottom. And minus 3x to the power of 4. Don't leave this as over 1. There's no need to do that. And working with exactly the same uh, type of question here, we're going to split up the fraction into the numerators with the same denominator on the bottom. And then simplify using our rules of algebra. So it's going to be 4 from 20 divided by 5. Uh, x to the power of 5 from x7 divided by x squared. And we use the subtraction rule there. And then it's going to be 3 from the 15 divided by 3, and x from the x cubed divided by x squared, the 3 take away the 2. So this is your final answer here. Okay, so now it's your turn. Pause the video now, have a go at these four questions, and then we'll go through the answers together. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at answering these questions here. Let's go through them together. So the first thing you would do with this one is cancel out the 4 and the 2. So do 4 divided by 2, and you get 2. And then you use the subtraction rule to cancel out these algebraic terms here. So 3 take away 1 is 2. So the answer here is 2p squared. On question 2 here, what we'll do is we'll simplify the left-hand side first and then think about a fraction of it over 2y cubed. So in this case here, it's going to be 4 to the power of 3 because those powers work in it's still the same way as they would if it was 4 to the power of 3. So that's going to be 64. And then we multiply our indices together. So that's y to the power of 9. And then this division here, let's think of that as a fraction. Remember, division is the same as a fraction effectively. 
2y cubed. And now we'll simplify here by dividing our numbers, so that'll be 32. And then y to the power of 9 divided by y cubed, that's y to the power of 6. OK, I've included one of these expanding brackets one to see if you've been caught out by this negative here. So let's expand the first term, so 4c plus 12d squared. And now we're going to take away everything from this right-hand expression. So that's going to be take away 6c and take away 3d squared. Let's now simplify what we've got here. We've got 4c and negative 6c, so that's minus 2c. And 12d squared take away 3d squared, that's plus 9d squared. OK, and one of these fractions ones as well. So hopefully the first thing you did was you split up your fraction. We're keeping the numerator separate and the same denominator on each of the terms. So just like this. And then divide through your numbers. So we get 3x and then subtract your indices. So that's a 3. And divide your numbers. So that's 5x and 6 take away 1 is 5. Okay, so that's the answer to these four questions. Thanks for watching.